I just co-hosted on Eliza David's Brew City book launch party on Facebook and that was a lot of fun. I'll put the link in the downstairs because even though obviously the party will be over by the time this comes out you can still check it out and I'll link her interview that I did with her last year about her Cougarette series which that was fun. We had a lot of fun with that. Um, me and my math magician we are on the way to the library because it might be Saturday but we're gonna get some work done. We're gonna be productive. And I'm going to edit this week 11's vlog and finish a couple of freelance posts and hopefully get something sent to Amy so that I'm not a jerk. Okay. <laughs> of Tamara not sleeping worth a damn which okay so what it happens all the time nothing new there today it I um I woke up around 10 or something and I was still exhausted and don't you hate that when you wake you just immediately wake up feeling tired like no one wants that there's no way to operate you know and I've been struggling just to focus. So I'm going to go to the library again. Also, are you guys following me on my like, social media? Um, all, of, all of my social media links are always in the downstairs. I always have them there. And you know, I just, I don't know. I'd like to, I like to have more chats on Twitter, especially because I've recently realized how many people that I'm following who are just always posting about books that they've written or books that they're trying to sell or help someone try to sell. Book sale, and that's it. My book was just released three months ago. Buy it, buy it, buy it. Here's a book. You want to buy that? Get it. It just feels weird because sometimes you don't know who these people are. They don't tell you anything about the book. There's not really, like, you see the cover and you don't really know anything about it other than the price. That's not really enticing to a reader. But it's a good thing to think about when I'm going to be doing the same. How often should you be posting about your book sale or whatever? How many times is enough for the day? How often do you do this and if you do it too much, are you going to turn off readers? What should you say when you're tweeting out things about your book to entice people? What kind of hashtags should you use? What time of day should you do it? Should you spread it out throughout the day? Should you do it at different times every day? You know, things to think about. I just realized that I'm not sure if I recorded anything today and so I thought I should. I spent most of the day getting ready for the tweet chat. We had a special guest, um, Bonnie Jo. Stufflebeam, which her name is a trip and on her website she talks about the origins of her name and funny things that people have said about it and um, we haven't had a guest for a while on hashtag great right stuff so I feel like I need to develop a better system for hosting a guest because it felt like I felt very confusing I can I can imagine someone who hasn't really been in a tweet chat before and been involved and having like everyone kind of throw questions at them all at once. And I did say, you know, this is this is how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna have these five questions and she'll answer them and then we'll kind of open it up to the floor and then, you know, you can ask your questions. And, but like no one paid any attention to me. And I didn't want to be a jerk and kind of like ah, be good um this whole month was about like 
meeting our readers and how can we connect with them on a better level. So I'm planning on taking each of the tweet chats and putting them together in some type of newspaper kind of format so people can just access them all in one place because they kind of all work together. If you can hear the howling dog, I'm sorry. That's just my life. So I think that's something that I'm going to try to continue having a theme each month. I think that it gives the information kind of a cohesiveness. It feels like I'm building something while I'm doing this because we're all learning together. You know, we're sharing information. I'm sharing stuff that I'm finding out. Everyone's sharing their own life experiences. And I feel like as we're doing this, if we go with the theme, then each week kind of builds on each other. And I'd like to have more guests this year. It just feels good to do this and then at the end of the month to have someone come in and kind of like, this is the person that kind of ties it all together. Or if there's any lingering questions that you have or any ideas that you are wondering about that you can just toss them out there to this person. But you know, in order to do that and for me to feel comfortable with that, I'm going to need to have a better system in place. Making coffee. I'm so tired that I put the coffee kind of in the filter, then kind of outside the filter. And I think there might be coffee in the water, like grounds in the water. So, you know, feeling very good. <laughs> Pretty good. Oh my gosh. I am so tired. Am I recording? Huh. I'm gonna go in for coffee cup number two. I've just about finished this article that I've been putting off writing forever. Like I've been writing a little bit at a time, but really it shouldn't be taking this long. It should have already been done. And that's making me anxious, you know? But I'm gonna finish it today. So that is out of the way. Today on my Facebook, I asked people to give me um, songs that make them cry. So I've been thinking about tapping more into different emotions and infusing those emotions into my writing. And for uh, Blood Rose, Roses and Honeysuckles, I've been kind of listening to 90s inspired music. And I think now, I, and I have a set list for that, and I think now I need to um, focus more on the emotion and being able to tap in to those emotions that are happening in this book and in the other books that I write for this series I've decided that yeah I'm gonna go with a trilogy uh, a lot of information I'm just imparting sorry probably the coffee but um yeah so I was thinking that a good way to be able to these sadder parts of the book and make sure that when I'm writing kind of hits that part in your heart and so you listen to a crap ton of sad songs so dude there are so many songs that people have suggested it's kind of crazy um I'm gonna make a song list probably through Spotify and um if you guys want that if you want access to it or whatever let me know in the comments and also I'll put a link to um, to that post that Facebook post in the description so that you guys can go check it out and check out all these sad songs because there might be some that you haven't heard of and you won't if you're like me you like listening to sad songs anyway so this is just like a cool I don't know recommendations list and also if you have any songs that make you sad as hell add them to the list I can't believe how many songs there are. Like, you guys are some morose bastards. I appreciate it. All right, more coffee now. So my friend Ted Webb, he put this book together, The Starling Connection. And, um, oh. I, he sent me a copy which was awesome and I haven't I read I read the ebook but I haven't read the I haven't read this and he said that he's edited some since the ebook so I'm excited to check it out <laughs> this is his, 
I don't know if you guys will be able to see that, but this is his author photo. <laughs> that abuses me to no end. Ted's awesome. He's one of my dearest friends, and we've been friends for years. We met, uh, we met years ago at a poetry reading in Morgantown, West Virginia, and it was a poetry reading at. I feel like it was. It wasn't at a bar, but it was at like a a food place, like an eatery or something. It wasn't like a coffee shop or something like that. It was it wasn't Mutt's. Busted Rusket? The Rusted Musket. Is that what it was? Anyway, but we we've we've had so many good experiences together and I feel like we're both growing our, in our own as writers, you know, and as artists. And he's been doing a lot of um, stuff with like playwriting and things in Morrytown. And I'm just real excited for him. It's really cool. So, yeah. So I was really excited to get that. And I'll put a link in the downstairs for Ted's blog so you guys can go check him out. He is a fantastic writer and he's such a thoughtful individual. He's just, he's just wonderful. Can you see it? Oh God, it's so sore. It's Friday. I don't care what time it is. It's like after one, somewhere around two. I don't know. Ugh. I had my doctor's appointment today so I can get my medication, which that's fine. You know, you have to do that. And I was, excuse me, my bus was late. So therefore I was late for my appointment and I was deboarding the bus and these group, this group of women were like crowded around the door and they were really close to it. And I was trying to get around them and I banged my head, maybe the side mirror or something. I'll show you the picture that I posted on Instagram that was like very much after the fact like when I was sitting in my doctor's office and he probed it and told me it was a bump thanks and he didn't have any ice I'm gonna go take a nap and I'm also gonna end this vlog sorry to end it on a sour note and I don't mean to uh, complain but this just happened it hurts and Sorry.